And Skip mentioned it, but we are going to start things off by talking about a different GOAT, because I'm in the mood to talk a little Tom Brady and the Patriots. According to multiple reports, the Patriots did not know Tom Brady was planning on leaving New England until the night before. Well, it was also reported that the Patriots were willing to match the Buccaneers' offer a while back. So, Shannon, I start with you. Do you believe it was Brady's choice to leave New England? Or Belichick's choice to nope. move on from it? Nope. <laughs> this is revisionist history again, Jenny. What I'm starting to see, because I remember Skip Bayless <laughs> told me something about when LeBron James had lost and, and, and his camp had put out, he had to be sedated. Hogwash. <laughs> they didn't know till the night before. Actually, they knew three years in advance when they did not extend him. You see what is trying, what is happening here, and I like to equate this situation to a relationship because Coach Belichick and Tom Brady was in a 20-year relationship. Skip, just because you don't do the breaking up doesn't mean you didn't want this. Because guess what I did, Skip? If I don't come home, I come home at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. If every time I'm doing things sneaky and the girl ends up breaking up with me, you don't get to say when I broke up with him, I set the chain of events in motion. I was the one that was coming home at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I was the one that you kept hearing whispers about that I was seeing somebody else on the other side. And then all of a sudden, you get the courage after I've done this for the last three years? Oh, no, 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 no. Because what Brady did not want to break up, what Brady wanted was what I didn't give the girl, the commitment. They did not extend Tom Brady. Tom Brady wanted a commitment. They were unwilling to give him that. They could have made this thing work. All they had to do was extend, extend Tom Brady. Tom Brady's happy when they didn't do that. And I, we saw this at the beginning of the year. They gave him a little extra $8 million. He got $23 million, but no contract extension. <laughs> Tom Brady is trying to rewrite history. I want it out. I left. Well, if I keep on doing things to show you that I'm not interested, you should leave. And that's exactly what happened. <clears throat> Shannon Sharp, I yes. hate to inform you of this, but I'm afraid you're wrong again about Tom Brady. I've been trying to explain to you this from the start was Tom Brady's choice to leave. Now that has been <laughs> confirmed by another report from Ian Rappaport of NFL.com and NFL Network, who's saying that A, the Patriots were holding out hope that when Brady visited Robert Kraft's house on that Monday night of free agent week, that they could talk him into, at least Robert Kraft could talk Tom into staying. That they were still holding out hope two days later when he began to talk seriously with Tampa. And once he was offered two years at 25 million a year, two years for 50 total million, that Robert Kraft, according to Ian Rappaport, was again willing to match the two-year deal to keep Tom Brady in New England. So it sure sounds to me like Bill Belichick lost a second time. We know from the ESPN report of three years ago that Belichick really lost the first time when he wanted to go forward after the 2017 season, or it's during the 2017 season, with Jimmy Garoppolo, that Kraft said, no, 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 you're going to trade Jimmy G at the trade deadline. And we know Belichick basically gave him away out of spite to San Francisco. But, but here we're hearing now that Robert Kraft was not on Belichick's side. Again, do I think Belichick wanted Tom gone? Yes, I do. And to your point, do I think they, that Kraft was trying to play it down the middle to keep both sides happy by going year to year on the contract? Yes, I do. Do I think Brady ultimately was alienated by year to year? I do. But I remind you, Brady was the one who negotiated going into last season, you cannot franchise tag me going into 2020. So Brady was saying to them, I, I want to be able to cut ties. If it's my choice, it will be my choice to walk out the door and you cannot stop me. And remember, just the other day, two days ago, Brady told Howard Stern that he was pretty sure he was going to leave going into last football season. And his bottom line to Howard Stern was, 
It was just time. The truth was the bridge had been burned to the ground between Belichick and Tom Brady. And it went back to, to as you know, Shannon, it started with deflate gate when Bill Belichick actually called his own press conference on the Saturday ahead of Super Bowl week and, and even went into, remember he did his Mona Lisa veto speech about, he's referring to my cousin Vinny, the Marisa Tomei character. And, and he was trying to tell yeah. everybody, I don't know as much about football as she knew about cars in the movie. Baloney, you, you know everything about football. And he was trying to say, ask my quarterback. I don't know anything about deflated footballs. <laughs> no, Bill, you got busted the first time around for Spygate, got caught cold, you know, cold-bloodedly cold-handed with red-handed with, with the evidence in your hand, thanks to Eric Mangini, obviously your, your former assistant coach who was then the Jets head coach, who blew the whistle on you. So you were already caught once, and I think you got caught twice with Deflategate, and, and then we, we go all the way into everything that started to unfold between Bill and Tom, you know all the rest of the story, and, and finally it got to Brady decided, well, you cost me one Super Bowl by not playing Malcolm Butler, and you gave up 41 points while I was throwing for a playoff record 505. Then you cost me a, a number two seed and a bye last year in the final home game when you let Ryan Fitzpatrick go 80 yards for a touchdown in the last three minutes. And finally, as you said, Shannon, I think Brady looked at the roster and said, you, you just let it get old before our very eyes. And he said, I, I don't want to stay here. I can't win here. I can't win with a coach who doesn't want me here. So it was Tom Brady's decision to say, no, I'm going to Tampa Bay. Skip, you said that he negotiated. The thing was is that he wanted the contract extension. They said, this is what we'll do. We'll give you $8 million, but we're not adding years to it. Tom says, if I accept this eight million, I want the ability for I want you not to have the ability to franchise me. OK, Skip, if that's the case, why not after the season they extend Tom Brady if they want him as much as this report said they did? Why did they wait till I got to go? Uh, because remember, Skip, they extended it a week free agency. So in other words, you had a week extra to talk and negotiate. Why not give him the contract extension then? Why not in twenty after the 2017, uh, 2017 season? Why not after 2018? Why did they not extend Tom Brady if they wanted Tom Brady as much as this report said they wanted Tom Brady? Because they didn't. Coach Belichick set the chain of events in motion. Skip, Coach Belichick was coming in at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning when she knew he wasn't at work. Coach Belichick was being seen around town with someone else that wasn't his girlfriend. And she knew this. She had had enough. So, Coach, yeah, she broke up. But Coach Belichick wanted you to. Coach Belichick didn't want that on his resume to say, I cut Tom Brady because at least Skip, he does have a little cover. Well, Tom left and you and Ian Rappaport and everybody else putting it out there like they broke up. But nah, nah, nah. This chain of events was set in motion by one Bill Belichick because it started in 2017 and they did not because, Skip, let me tell you what would have happened. Even though Tom Brady was really, really upset that they wanted to move forward with Jimmy Garoppolo, if they had extended Tom Brady after the 2017 season, you and I both know he would have gladly accepted. He would have put his name on the dotted line and he'd have played three, four more years in New England. But that's not what Coach Belichick wanted. And Mr. Kraft could have easily said, now nah, we're not doing what year to year, Bill. We're giving it, if he wants three years, we're giving him three years. And if Tampa, we're not even getting to Tampa. We're doing three years, Tommy. We're going to do three years at $60 million, fully guaranteed. Bill Belichick said, no, we're not. And Mr. Kraft says, okay, Billy. That's what he calls him, Billy. Billy, fine. You know, everybody knows that's how it played out. But Tom Brady wants to save face. <laughs> Legacy doesn't mean anything, whatever. Mm. So, by the way, Shannon, 
It, it sounds yes. like you speak from experience about being out at three or four in the morning when you're supposed to be with somebody. I don't know. It just you, you keep bringing that up like you know exactly how that feels. See, you and Jenny always try to pin it on me. I'm just saying, Skip Bayless, you know what I do. I speak from personal experience. I know people that know people that might have done that in the past. Ah. <laughs> Well, here's what I know. I know that Robert Kraft said after that fateful Monday night meeting, that was the first day of, of sort of informal, unofficial free agency. It started on Monday mm -hmm. when, when you could start to have contact with each other's representatives. Tom Brady went to Robert Kraft's house and Robert said the next couple of days that, hey, I thought we were going to have the same meeting we always have where we kind of hash it out and figure it out and that we would come to an agreement that we would go forward for another year. Again, when you get to age 42, I get it that the owner of the team is saying, well, let's go year to year just in case it doesn't go well next year. Maybe things go wrong. Maybe you get banged up. Maybe you sort of lose heart. Maybe you finally dec decide, I, I just don't want to do this anymore. So there's no reason to go for two more years and Tom Brady was still willing to go two years. But Robert Kraft, once again, a lot of times in negotiations, if suddenly there's, quote unquote, another woman involved, you say, oh, wait, I'll do anything to keep you. And according to Ian Rappaport, Robert Kraft was willing then to go for two more years guaranteed at $50 million. So that signals to me that no matter what Bill Belichick wanted, he lost again, and he should have lost because obviously Tom Brady is far more valuable than Bill Belichick ever hoped to be, and Robert Kraft knows that. Robert Kraft, bad, remember what Dana White said? Oh, Robert Kraft badly wants to keep Tom Brady. He did, again, in, in a best case scenario for one more year just to be sure, but if, you, if you're forced to because there's quote unquote another woman who wants Tom Brady, well, then he was willing to go two years and 50 million guaranteed. And I don't blame him because the joke is going to be on New England and ultimately on Robert Kraft for not being able to keep the goat Tom Brady. Skip, this is the contract. If Mr. Kraft wanted Tom Brady, when he comes before that first unofficial meeting, you say, here's Tom, here's three years, $60 million, fully guaranteed. If I want you, if I, because here's the thing, Skip, again, when you tell her that, okay, I'm not going to do it anymore, anything that you've heard about me is not true, but I'm not going to come in at those hours of the morning, I'm, I'm going to put your mind at ease. Skip, she's already fed up. Tom Brady was fed up at that point. No, he's not going back to you and allowed you because he was fed up. He's saying, if you wanted me as much as you're showing interest in me now, why didn't you do this three years ago? Skip, that's always the case. The person always wants you the most once someone else shows interest in you. That's how it works. If you want Skip, I, I've never become so popular. I ain't gonna lie to you, Skip, but I ain't never become so popular until I started working with you. And all the women that let me go years ago, they want your boy back. I said, no, nope, no, nope. Skip told me not to come back. Skip said, keep your mind focused on this show, and I don't want you dealing with the women. I, I said, okay. So now, that's what happened with Tom Brady. Yes, we could have had Tom three years ago if we really wanted him, but we didn't. And it wasn't until, and Tom, like, I've had enough. I've had 20 years of y'all marginalizing me, Skip, because that's what it is. Because any other quarterback that's accomplished, they're throwing parades, they've already got a statue up of it. But Coach Belichick has minimized, marginalized, and sometimes been openly disrespectful. The man has 12 stitch stitches in his hand, in the palm of his hand, on his throwing hand. And instead of you saying, hey, that was a gutsy performance, you say, what? he didn't have open heart surgery. I mean, what are we talking about here? Okay, Tom, here's that. That man, again, Skip, that man got feelings. You, you, I mean, I understand you think he's a cyborg, but he's like, hold on, wait a minute. I got 12 stitches in my hand. I got them stitched up. I got them glued up. I'm going out there playing my tail off, 
and that's the kind of reception that I, that, that's the kind of response I get. I didn't have open heart surgery. Okay. And then you still, and, and still, no contract extension. I go to win the Super Bowl, no contract extension. Now, I, if I get an opportunity to get up out of here, oh, I'm going, I'm going to show you guys. But Skip, the chain of events had already been put in place by one Bill Belichick. So Tom had no choice but to move on because Bill had been blatantly and overly, there's only so much disrespect. Skip. I don't care who you are. I don't care how, uh, uh, you know, a person that you think, you know what? Sometimes enough is enough. And he's like, oh, man, that, that's the laid, most laid back person. And people look at Tom Brady as being laid back, be, golly gee whiz. But even the most laid back of people will reach a breaking point where they said enough is enough, 22s, I'm out. Okay, I'm going to use one last, because you've been doing it, relationship analogy here. Here's what okay. happened in reverse that, that you can't see from your vantage point. Remember, Tom Brady okay. was in a 20-year relationship, and last year he woke up and looked at who he's been with for 20 years, and, and he decided, wait a second, what I'm with is getting old and fat and ugly because <laughs> the cupboard was bare. A am I right? Because Tom Brady is looking at what's left in New England, and it's old and fat and ugly. And he's saying, what is this guy doing? The great Bill Belichick, regarded as the GOAT coach, had let his roster, even according to the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp, get old yeah. right before mm -hmm. your very eyes. Mm -hmm. And yes. when he went to make a move at the trade deadline last year, he went for an older Mohamed Sanu that even the great Shannon Sharp right. concluded quickly he just can't play anymore. He can't separate. It looks like he's running with the proverbial piano on his back. So that's all Belichick could do to help Tom Brady. Obviously, A.B. flamed out quickly. Then all of a sudden, Belichick mm -hmm. cuts Josh Gordon. And I'm not saying that was the wrong move, but he did have a little bit of success before he flamed out in Seattle. And you look mm -hmm. around, and what's left? There's no Gronk. It's the worst collection. It's the worst tight end unit in the NFL. Your only go-to receiver by the end of the year was broken down, beat up Julian Edelman with three different injuries, one in his shoulder that was going to require surgery. He led the league in drops. They, they were second in the league as a receiving core in drops. They were ranked 23rd as receivers by Pro Football Focus. Nikhil Harry, I thought, was going to be a stud. He was gone for eight games, and when he came back, I, I didn't see stud, at least yet. I know it's unfair because he was a raw rookie, but I don't think Tom Brady loved what he saw from Nikhil Harry. So he's looking at next year saying, I, I, I can't win there. And he's looking at another woman, to use your analogy, down south, under the sun, in the sunshine, on the yep. ocean in Tampa, at least on the Gulf of Mexico, and he's saying, wait a minute, they're much younger and much prettier because I, I'm going to have four weapons all better than any single weapon I had in New England. So it's Tom Brady's choice to say, I want to keep winning Super Bowls. Belichick or no Belichick, I just want to win. I want to compete at the highest level, and he's not holding up his end of the bargain in New England. He's not being the GOAT team builder anymore because we got nothing. And what has the GOAT team builder done in free agency? Next to nothing. I, I don't know what they're doing. I, I don't know where they're going in New England. It, it looks like they're dead in the water. I know Belichick could have five aces up his sleeve. We'll see what he does with the 23rd overall pick in the first round of the draft. But I can't see any more than eight and eight-ish. And I believe Tom Brady saw sabotage-ish last year where he's thinking maybe Belichick's trying to do me in so I can't win and I'll want to leave. And Belichick probably got his wish, but it wasn't his doing. He wasn't, so to speak, pulling that trigger. Robert Kraft was trying to keep Tom Brady much to the chagrin of the GOAT coach. 
So I believe Belichick lost twice to Robert Kraft, but it was Tom Brady's call to say, sorry, as you said, 22s. Deuces, I'm out. <laughs> Still, Baylor, I've never been married, but I played 14 years in the NFL, and I know guys that have been married, and some have been caught doing being dirty. Now, when you get caught doing bur- being dirty, you're at the mercy of the person that catches you. Now, I've known there have been big body Mercedes been purchased. I know there have been six, seven carat diamond rings being purchased. Okay, they stay. Talk, Coach Belichick got caught being dirty with Jimmy G. Now, to make Tom Brady stay, give him that contract extension. He didn't get the contract extension. 22 out again. Skip Bayless, I'm telling you how this thing works. Tom cannot write a narrative that's going to fit, that's going to say, Coach Belichick wanted me, and I kissed Coach Belichick goodbye. Because we know that's not true. We know Tom wanted to fit, I'll play all of his year. But Skip, he said, who is this hero? Who was his favorite childhood player growing up? And I told you, if he's not careful, he'll be just like his childhood hero. I guess Joe Montana really wanted to go to Kansas City, right, Skip? That's what he really wanted. No, he did not. He wanted to finish in San Francisco. They said, no, it's not happening. Steve Young is going to be our quarterback moving forward. Well, I don't know if Jared Stidham is going to be Steve Young. But Coach Belichick says, I want him to be my quarterback moving forward. Tom Brady says, enough is enough. I'm out. That's how it happened. Ta-da! Okay, but wait a second. The, the Patriots didn't trade Tom Brady to Tampa, obviously. He, he had, it was of his own volition. I, I choose them. He could have chosen the L.A. Chargers. I believe he could have chosen any one of six or seven other teams that were interested in him. But he chose Tampa, yeah. shocking the world. But the more I look at it, the more yeah. I realize why he chose Tampa. I think it was a great move. Too. And he did say, go ahead. I know why he chose Tampa, too. Because the lie that he told the other day, Jenny, about he didn't care about his legacy. If you don't care about your legacy, Cincinnati needs a quarterback. There's a few other teams that need quarterbacks. But you care about your legacy because you went to a team that have offensive weapons galore. You have went to a team that has a head coach that's an offensive mastermind. So in actuality, you do care about your legacy. Because if you didn't, because <laughs> there are several other teams that do not have the offensive firepower that Tampa Bay possess. And we saw something last year. Jenny, and I, you, we, you and I, we talked about it. You remember Tom Brady went over 1,000 career yards rushing. And what did he do at the end of the game? He kneeled down and then pointed to the official, that's the spot. I don't want to be 999. I want to make sure it stays at 1,000. Skip Bayless, you need to miss me. You need to miss me with all this old Tom Brady stuff because it's revisionist history. It's a joke. I've been there the whole while. Watch all 20 years of this man's career. As a matter of fact, my last Pro Bowl in the NFL was Tom Brady's first Pro Bowl after the 2001 season. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady were my quarterbacks. There you go sure again, was. trying to put yourself in the same sentence with the goat. And Shannon, I'm sorry, as great as you were, it doesn't work. And what you're missing is he chose the Suckineers. He went to the worst franchise in the history of sports. As far as winning percentage right now, nobody in any sport is any worse than the Suckineers. And he said, oh, I'll go do that. He wanted a great challenge at age 42, and he's taking on a great challenge. Uh, they were 7-9 uh, and you, nine you, last year. If you don't mind me asking, where is the Suckaneers offensive skill people? Where would they rank in the NFL, pro football focus? Where do they have Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Bray, and uh, O.J. Howard? Where are they rank? Okay, as a franchise, they might suck. But offensively, they were number two in scoring. Jameis led the, uh, a league in passing. Skip, Skip, stop this notion. You know better than that. Well, all I know for sure is I now know for sure why you never got married. <laughs> that, I was too in my career like and you, Skip. that is it how we wrap this career. one up. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.